Wait, remember The X's? It was an animated series on Nickelodeon centered around the X family, a family of spies who fight crime while concealing their secret identities from the outside world. Whenever I'm in a conversation with others about shows specifically on Nickelodeon in this case, that came and went without a trace, The X's seems to always be that lingering memory that never fades away. Heavily inspired by the classics like James Bond and Get Smart, no, the original show, not the Steve Carell version, although, I do like that version as well. So for today, together, let's take a look back at The X's, what it was during its short life, and maybe just why it, for some reason, holds a place in some people's memories. I want to give a huge thank you to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring today's video. You can get Surfshark VPN at surfshark.deal slash jordanfringe and enter promo code jordanfringe for 83% off and four extra months for free. Surfshark VPN is, well, a VPN, a virtual private network. It'll help you secure your digital life at an already great price, especially by using my code at the link down below. You'll get an incredible deal. Surfshark offers one of the best full coverage VPN packages out there with use of an unlimited number of devices that can all run under one subscription at the same time. Literally as many devices as you want. With apps available on all platforms, PC, Mac, the Linux users out there, even smart TVs, video game consoles, web browsers, you name it, Surfshark has you completely covered. All along with 24-7 live customer support and a full 30-day money-back guarantee to make sure you know it's risk-free by giving them a shot. As well as their strictly no-logs policy which encrypts your data, meaning that they do not keep any of it, nor does anyone know what you're doing online. A nice security measure in the digital age. Want to watch something that isn't streaming in your country? No problem. Just connect to any of the servers Surfshark has around the world and you'll be able to access libraries of content otherwise not available in your country. It's fast and easy to use, filled with features that go beyond just the basics with a regular VPN. If you want to protect yourself online while browsing as well as help support the channel, again, you can get Surfshark VPN at surfshark.deal slash jordanfringe and enter promo code jordanfringe for 83% off and four extra months for free. Thanks again to Surfshark for sponsoring today's video. The X's ran from November 25th, 2005 to November 25th, 2006. Six, pulling a William Shakespeare and dying on the same day it was born. So yeah, the show lasted for exactly one year. The X family worked for Superior, an international covert crime-fighting organization that battles world-threatening and occasionally zany schemes from a series of cartoonish supervillains. While of course the X's most important mission is to stop the bad guys, protecting the secret of their double lives from their normal friends and neighbors is a vital part of their job as Superior agents. A part of their job, the X's have a particular difficulty with. Literally, the photo op episode in particular starts with the family being reprimanded about hiding their identities and blending in better as they haven't been acting as a functional family unit. And while that episode isn't the first episode in general, going by production codes, this was the first episode made. So technically starting off the series dysfunctional. Superior's greatest foe is the organization Snafu, or the Society for Nefarious and Felonious Undertakings. How long did it take to come up with the words that match that acronym? An evil organization who will stop at nothing for world domination. Ran by Glowface, voiced by Chris Hardwick, pulls in by name, not by tone, the references and inspirations of James Bond, with the name similar to Blofeld. From an outside view, the X family is your everyday 20th century stereotypical dime a dozen nuclear family complete with a mom, a dad, and some children. And there's even a dog. It's only once you get inside the family dynamic that you start to see how unusual they are. We get to not only see how they operate on missions, but how their dynamics as a family work, how everyday things to them don't really matter to the overall overall point of what they do day to day. We see an example of this early on with the son, Truman X, who just wants a normal birthday. That isn't interrupted by having to save the world like it has been year after year before. This becomes such a problem that it leaves Truman lethargic and unwilling to participate in the action, which I think is a unique way to look at characters like this, especially when you're dealing with not only just adult characters, but kid characters who don't get to have a childhood, and are as equally important to the overall action happening as the adults. All this excitement is exhausting. We need to regroup. The X's will be right back. The X's are back and throwing down secret agent style. Making up the X family is the father and leader of the team, Tucker X. Tucker is a medley of 60s spy cliches inspired by the likes of James Bond and Maxwell Smart. He's a renowned spy, a master of the art of fisticuffs, and a great tactician. That being said, Tucker often finds himself struggling with everyday issues like remembering his civilian name. Serving alongside Tucker is his wife, combat specialist Trudy X. Trudy is a master of mixed martial arts, a wonderful mom and a spy able to take down henchmen twice her size. Trudy is a caring and
and protective mother to her kids with an unconventional parenting style influenced by her life in espionage. Both of them are voiced by voice actors who have been in something, if not almost everything, you've ever watched. Tucker being voiced by Patrick Warburton. Hey, Peter. Cusco. The poison specifically for Cusco. In Trudy, voiced by Wendy Malick. Trudy and Tucker's eldest child is Tuesday, a 16-year-old girl who is a combination of a competent spy and a stereotypical teenager. Tuesday, voiced by Lindsay Burleson, serves as the family team's mission investigator and is easily the most normal, being able to fit into everyday society. And thanks to her real-world knowledge, it's often the only thing that keeps the ex's cover from ever being blown. The youngest, but definitely not the most innocent ex, is Truman. He's not years old, we previously just talked about him, and he's voiced by Jansen Penetier. Truman is the team's technology expert who often uses his intelligence for evil. Well, evil in the opinion of his older sister. They still are a family after all, so as siblings often do, they bicker and cause annoyances for one another. Early on in the series, Rex X joins the family. Rex is a dog that Truman received for his birthday. He was actually supposed to kill Truman due to the mind control chip installed in his brain, thanks to Snafu, but Truman's love for Rex snapped him out of it. That specific operation was headed by Sasquatch, who is voiced by Randy Savage, and yes, it's just Randy Savage being all like, Oh yeah, brother, I will not let you foil our plans. I will destroy you like someone who's hungry and sees a Slim Jim. Oh yeah. <coughs> That hurt my voice so bad. <coughs> After that, Rex just joined the family. The exes live inside of Home Base, a computerized hyper-intelligence house that runs the functions of the house. Think of Disney's 1999 TV movie Smart House. It serves as the team's contact with Superior and provides mission alerts. Voiced by Stephen Root for more veteran industry voice talent added in. External to his official duties, Home Base also acts as a voice of reason for the family. According to the creator Carlos Ramos, more on him later, Home Base is based on HAL 9000 from 2001 A Space Odyssey. So whether that's a good thing or eventually a bad thing and he won't open the pod bay doors, this is just another example along with Smart House where it sounds cool to have an AI house, but I'm convinced that I don't need that, especially being based on HAL 9000 that only strikes fear into me. Open the pod bay doors, HAL. Dude, this is a Wendy's restaurant. Let's now come back to the ex's major villain, Glowface, the leader of Snafu. Glowface is this red dude whose head is encased in a glass plasma globe looking thing. Side note, I wanted a plasma globe so bad as a kid. How did it always know where my individual fingers were? He's an egotistical, loud, and delusional villain who thinks himself more of a threat than he really is. I think the word of the day for him is compensation. His schemes for world domination are normally childish and poorly thought out. The main thing holding Glowface's schemes together is his butler and right-hand man, Lorenzo Suave. Lorenzo is an amalgamation of all villains second-in-command cliches. He is stylish and well-dressed and often the only thing keeping Glowface on plan. One day, he will get the recognition he deserves. And while we do see other villains and characters come in and go out of various plots, Glowface is the most reoccurring and main antagonist for the show. He even has this nephew, who's also an intern for Snafu, Brandon, who has this weird relationship with Tuesday where they reluctantly fight one another if the action calls for that, and it usually turns into them just planning dates to go on. He doesn't really want to be on the evil side of history, he just needs the school credits. The X's will be right back. If you get up, you'll mess up the delicate balance of the Nicktoon universe. The X's are back. It's fun to say, woohoo! You should try it. No? Well, back to the show. The X's big rival outside of Snafu is The Wise an alternative spy family employed by Superior who is just like the X's, uh, but better. The Y's want the X's to fail and disappear so they get kicked out of Superior, and the Y's will become the undisputed top spy family. It's literally spy versus spy, X versus Y, my oh my. Now, when you look at the X's, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Correct, the show was heavily compared to Pixar's Incredibles for having a very similar structure of a family hiding their secret identities and fighting crime. The only main difference outside of the art style is that these are spies and the Incredibles were superheroes. Speaking of the art style, I think what I like best about the show is that. It truly captured the look of what my head would interpret a spy thriller espionage cartoon would look like. It has this moody lighting with colorful bits where it's needed, and these distinct, sharp, and round blended edges for these characters and environments. The family dynamic works really well here as their dysfunction contributes to their personalities, resulting in believable characters. For me, I think the show had the makings of something special. It felt different from a lot on the network at the time, especially during the rise of superheroes. Loosely taking a concept of the Incredibles and making them spies on paper and an execution was a fun and interesting idea. The X's was created by Carlos Ramos, a CalArts graduate for Nickelodeon as his first major solo directing credit. Before the X's, Ramos had worked with Nickelodeon previously 
briefly in minor production roles. Most iconically, he worked as an art director for Nick and Fred Seibert's 1998 cartoon showcase, Oh Yeah Cartoons, which premiered seven minute cartoon shorts. I feel like I've made so many videos recently that relate the creation of shows and or the creators behind them to Oh Yeah Cartoons. During his career, Ramos has worked as an animation writer, storyboard artist, designer, and director on works for My Life as a Teenage Robot and Chalk Zone, to Star vs. the Forces of Evil, and Norm of the North Family Vacation. Okay, maybe we don't bring that last one up. Ramos received the 1998 Annie Award for his work on Chalk Zone and was nominated again in 2007 for his work on The X's. But you know, awards and nominations, while nice, mean nothing at the end of the day to networks if people aren't watching and products related to it cannot be made and sold. So The X's ended up running for one season with a total of 20 episodes before eventually being faded out due to lackluster ratings and in addition to just what I said seconds ago. While the animation style was unique and well made and the humor on par with anything else on Nickelodeon during the time, it just never managed to truly differentiate itself from the plethora of shows coming out at that time, and thus failed to gain an audience. While I think it does all that stuff in hindsight, there is a reason when looking back that it's just this memory of a moment from this existing, and not a constant pulse of propping the show up on a pedestal to always be remembered. The show also had very little advertisement during its run, and was often preempted by other shows. I do encourage you to watch it though. It's one season with a great concept, a fun art style, a talented voice crew, and it's well written. There's not much, especially as a kid, you can do to save a show. Especially back then when the internet wasn't as social as it is in current day, but I always feel this guilt as if I could have done something to help shows I liked. It's this weird feeling as if I could have done something when the only something I could have done is just tune in for the show. Which I did, maybe back then not every episode, but enough to where the show left a lasting impression in my memories. Can't really blame me if there were toys or merch to buy for it, that's up to the parents listening to their kids and buying it for them. Look, I, I wasn't gonna go get a paper route or something. I was just trying to duel people in Yu-Gi-Oh. You know, I'm sorry, I this just went off into a weird tangent. Anyway, the point is the show is worth your time. In fact, it won't even take up a lot of it. I enjoyed my time revisiting it and I will for sure come back to it again at some point as it's just too easy to digest and it's fun to talk about. Have you seen The X's? What other cartoon shows that only had one season deserved better than they had? Let me know. Thank you for rocking with me today. I have a big December plan, so thank you for all the incredible support. Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. Follow me on Twitter, or else. I'll be back with another video soon, but until then, later.